this is how this video is going to go. I'm going to explain to you guys what it is that you probably didn't catch at the Super Bowl, seeing how a lot of people apparently did not catch it. I'll be talking about uh, another little thing that was supposed to occur at the Super Bowl that uh, I think needs some attention, but I think needs a little bit better explanation. And also something else, too. I'm going to be showing you the proper way to disagree with somebody, especially on Twitter, if you don't see eye to eye on this one thing. And then I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on the game itself, okay? Seeing how it is that I am recording this video at the time the Super Bowl is ending, especially right here. Well, actually, it is over with now. But uh, we're going to be talking about this, so make sure you guys stick around for the full video. Now, gang, this video right here will be coming out tomorrow afternoon. So, uh, here's the thing. Last night, I kind of sort of caught something, and you guys obviously saw the thumbnail, and somebody's going to probably come in here and say, that right there wasn't what they were doing. They were injecting wokeness. Okay, this right here is what we're going to do. We're going to watch this little clip of the National Anthem, which, by the way, was performed by Chris Stapleton, which, by the way, was pretty good. But, obviously, I noticed something that a lot of people on Twitter, even those who were claimed to be anti-woke did not catch but obviously a lot of them are coming around and thinking wait a minute they just did throw this in our face they just did in fact hoodwink us we're gonna roll this really quick and even though nick sirianni crying is a wonderful thing to see at the same time though they really and truly just did hoodwink us with the wokeness oh, so proudly we hail at the twilight Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale road. Now, gang, I am showing you the image again. And, of course, uh, let's just say this right here. I caught it and tweeted it out a few times at a few people who were talking about how wonderful the national anthem was and how it was not woke, how it was what they were doing was not woke at all, even though Chris Stapleton's a little bit left-leaning. This was not about Chris Stapleton's politics. I could care less. It was a good performance. But it was obviously ruined for a reason. You see, that little mantra that you saw there, you probably called it right there in the middle, and I'm playing it for you again in a voiceover tone here. You'll notice how the camera just kind of pans in very, very slowly, and it comes across what appears to be a gay pride flag. Now, guys, we're going to be talking about that actual flag here in this video, too. But I want to go ahead and throw this out here. While I've been hearing a lot of people saying that they disagree that it was not a gay pride flag and it was the fact that, uh, I don't know, that members of the United States Navy on a ship, the USS Carl Vincent to be exact, have color-coded uniforms, that right there is in fact correct. But why in the world would you position them in the center and why in the hell would you then turn right back around and zoom the camera in, slow walking it across, unless you were not trying to pitch something across, or trying to pitch something to us, unless you were not trying to hoodwink us with something, as if to say you were not trying to go full-on woke, especially with the liberal singing of the National Anthem. Like I said before, I don't have a problem with Chris Stapleton, but what I do have a problem with is I have a problem with this apparent wokeness. And I've been talking about this for a while, that they just got political with us, and a lot of people did not notice it or see it, maybe because some people may be getting desensitized to it, which, by the way, I think is a serious problem. Why the hell is it do you think that people have been fighting back against this woke agenda so that way it does not get, it does not get introduced to our children, nor does it actually corrupt our kids? But as you guys can see, even some influencers on the right have found a way to not actually catch it. So yeah, go ahead and throw all your social justice warrior takes in the comment section. It is okay. You guys know me. I don't really have much for these people. I think the vast majority of them are a bunch of loons. And of course, somebody's going to come out here and say, well, you're just being a homophobe, dude. I've got family members that are gay. And we have these conversations all the time. And guess what? They have come around a lot more to my thinking than you might would actually realize. The fact of the matter is, is that the NFL just threw gay pride in our face. And uh, yeah, to go on top of that, they did that on a very unsuspecting audience. And they did that while we were lulled in the national anthem. Now, gang. National Anthem has been brought up a lot this week, and don't worry, I'll talk about this little headline here in a second, which, by the way, that take's probably going to surprise you. And I may even lose some of you after I give that take, but uh, there needs to be an explanation for that, too. Fact of the matter is, is that the NFL literally just went out of their way to hoodwink us while we were somewhat asleep. Now, let me go ahead and talk about this little section here about disagreeing with somebody on Twitter the right way. Sean Farash. I'm actually a fan of Sean. Sean has got a podcast. He's got a radio show. And Sean does the, if you know who he is, he does the uh, serial Trump impersonations. I'm pretty sure I don't need to put a lot of them in here. But don't worry if I can find them. I will place them in the description box. 
Sean seemed to disagree because he saw the white color coding in there. And don't worry, I'll explain that one away here in a second too because there needs to be some actual history given on the rainbow itself and why it is that, well, these people love to blaspheme uh, the, their own blasphemy. Fact of the matter is this right here. As you guys are seeing the tweets right here, we're obviously going back and forth. I eventually tell him, look, man, I agree to disagree. I enjoy your work. And as a result, he eventually followed me. Also, something else, too, I normally don't throw my military service around on Twitter. I have talked about it a couple of times here on uh, YouTube. I don't like to throw it around, but I mentioned the fact that I'm a Marine because when you're in the United States Marine Corps, you do obviously get educated on the Navy, and you get obviously educated on naval terms, so I figured I would throw that out there. Some people, of course, disagree with this. Some people obviously agree with it, but I'm pretty sure the day after, I'm pretty sure you people will understand that, uh, yes, the NFL just did go full-on political and just did hit us with a political agenda during the national anthem, and no, it was not kneeling. They found a brand new way to do it by obviously color-coding a bunch of men in gay pride order which brings me to that flag okay let's talk about that flag for a second now guys there's a uh, blasphemous component here that a lot of people don't like to talk about and obviously i typically don't tend to go religion or bring my way of life my christianity in this because i obviously am not that good of a christian but at the same time though i understand exactly what that flag represents now guys let me take you guys back in time it was a flood, the flood that actually wiped out the earth. God gave a covenant, or he, uh, let's just say he made a covenant with Noah. That covenant was that he would not destroy the world ever again by way of water. Of course, he did say that he would eventually destroy it by fire. However, the, um, let's just say the deal that he sealed with Noah, the stamp of approval that he would not do this again, was a rainbow. That is what God gave Noah. He gave him a rainbow to suggest, hey, look, I'm not going to do this by water again. That was God saying, I will not harm this earth. I will not drown this earth out again. And obviously, as I mentioned before, the rainbow was a covenant. The LGBTQ community or the LGBTQ people, the ones who push the agenda, not all gay people, of course, because like I said, I know some gay people and they're not like this at all. They are, for the most part, a uh, very, let's just say they're very, very much uh, anti-God. They're anti-Christianity. They claim that they are atheists, but in reality, they're not atheists at all. What they really are is they're just people who hate the idea of God or they hate Christianity as a whole because Christianity, obviously, does not condone homosexuality. It never really has. Also, something else, too, they seem willing to embrace Islam and embrace Islamic nations, but what they don't seem to realize is that in Christianity, we just simply uh, call you out for your act and we try to help you change your lifestyle. Whereas in Islam, if you are gay, they find a way to, uh, let's just say, do that there. Of course, they don't seem to understand this. But the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because they've even found ways to blaspheme their blaspheme. You see, Sean brought the fact that there was white in the color coding and that was his excuse to say that it was not wokeness. The problem is this right here. The white is used in the trans flag. Now, guys... I'm showing you guys some iterations of this particular flag. I'm showing you guys some iterations of this particular gay pride flag. And the reason why I want you to pay very close attention is because you'll notice that it changes. There's a triangle in there. At one point in time, they even had a circle in the middle to signify a butt. If that right there does not suggest to you maximum sexual deviancy, I have no idea what to say to you. Fact of the matter is, is that these people blaspheme their own blaspheme, and obviously the color code wouldn't even matter because... This right here is who the hell these people are. They're not exactly what we call educated even on their own issues or even on their own blasphemy. I just figure I would go ahead and throw that out there. Now, guys, with that right there being said, we had this other controversy, which is about the Black National Anthem. Now, guys, I've had a couple of takes on this right here, and here's my feeling. Let me give you guys a little bit of education first on this issue because I had to go back and get re-educated on this for the song is actually called Lift Up Every Voice and Sing. Now, you guys have heard my take on the national anthem before. I believe that you should stand, not because you're being ordered to. It's about respect. That rather is what it is about, is respect for those men and women who fought and died and sacrificed themselves for your right to basically be a dumbass or your right to do anything you want. Fact of the matter is this right here. The Black National Anthem, the song Lift Up Every Voice and Sing, I actually got introduced to it in a movie. That movie was called The Sum of All Fears. If you've ever seen that movie, of course, it stars Ben Affleck and Morgan Freeman. Very, very underrated movie. It gets kind of panned. I personally kind of liked it. But uh, during the uh, football game uh, segment, when they go to the National Anthem, where they're going to the stadium, which, by the way, was in Baltimore. I think they were basing it off an arena football league game. I don't know. 
But the thing is, it's right here. The song is being played. That's how I actually got introduced to it. And of course, I found it was called Lift Up Every Voice and Sing. You guys are seeing some actual information here. It was obviously written by a black man. It was written by a man who actually at that time voted Republican. And uh, you probably on the surface think that liberals don't seem to realize that they're actually undercutting their own social justice warrior agenda, which in a lot of ways they kind of are. Go back to what I was saying about the whole gay pride nonsense and the way they keep changing their gay pride flag. They're blaspheming their own blaspheme and they're undercutting their own social justice warrior narrative. Now, gang, I have some videos coming out this week. One of them, of course, I'm showing you guys a thumbnail here is about the left and why it's synonymous with mental illness. I'll probably bring that up a little bit in that video as well. It'll be, it'll be mentioned a lot. But the fact of the matter is, is that many people will view it as divisive because you're playing it at a point in time. I mean, there's even this photo of Carrie Lake uh, refusing to stand during it. Now, I was in the shower at the time. But apparently, it must have been playing when I was in the shower. But the thing is, it's right here. These people don't seem to understand that they're actually undercutting their own social justice warrior messaging. Even with all the social justice warrior messaging that was going on during the Super Bowl with commercials and stuff, if you could perceive it that way, you got to understand this right here is the textbook definition of woke right here. I would change it uh, one word in that little definition to uh, rampant because for the most part, wokeness is more corporate than anything else. It's the actual rampant pushing of ideals on people. And of course, it's being done through the corporations themselves. Now, guys, with that right there being said, I need to go ahead and give you guys some thoughts on the Super Bowl itself, which also takes me to another point. You see, as I mentioned with the Black National Anthem, you're kind of undercutting your social justice warrior messaging, which, by the way, that's what they're trying, they're trying to divide. But when people actually look into it, they see that it actually kind of undercuts their message. Of course, I prefer the original. And then to go on top of that, I want to ask you guys a question. If you know this story of Nimrod, let me ask you something really quick. How did God basically avert the whole, ta the whole, the whole Tower, of Babel of, uh, Tower of Babel? He confounded our languages, which I think is really kind of weird seeing how it is that the LGBTQ community, you got trans, don't like gay, gay, don't like lesbian. It just feels to me with all these flags that they may be blaspheming, the blaspheme being that they just may be uh, confounding their languages and that they may be actually separating and actually tearing themselves apart. Okay, I just figure I'd just throw that out there. I really was not impressed with the commercials. Now, guys, my team did not play in the Super Bowl. I'm not a Chiefs fan. I'm not an Eagles fan. As a matter of fact, I was not rooting for either one. I've never really cared for the Eagles. I haven't rooted for them since they played the Patriots back in 2000. I think it was early 2018, that Super Bowl, the 2017 season. And uh, while it is that I like Patrick Mahomes as a person, I'm not really that much of a fan of Jackson Mahomes and his aggravating wife or Mahomes is, Patrick Mahomes' is aggravating wife. I'm not interested in that because obviously it is a uh, very weird. However, the thing or annoying, but the thing is this right here. You're going to replace Indiana Jones with a female comedian that is not even known and you're going to kill Indiana. I mean, look, if you knew the actual story of the new Indiana Jones movie, then you would know that obviously they're ruining our favorite characters and our favorite movies. Best thing you could have done was just uh, let that last movie Kingdom of the Crystal Skull uh, you could have just, just left that one right there alone. For the most part, once again, I think people are just running out of creativity as far as these commercials are concerned. They spend millions of dollars on these commercials. And, of course, this right here is the product that we are getting. It's not a very good one if you have my um, honest-to-God thinking on exactly where we're going as a culture, as a society with Hollywood. It just seems to me like we're we're spending a lot of money on crap that, quite frankly, is not producing any results, nor is actually entertaining. With that there being said, let's talk about the game, and I'll go ahead and close this video out. The halftime show I found to be not too bad, but also at the same time kind of weird, especially considering the fact that... Uh, Everybody was in white, and it looked like, and somebody may have mentioned that maybe she was pregnant. I don't really know. I, I do know that Rihanna has a bit of a social justice warrior past, but at the same time, though, I can't really complain about it. Then again, I wasn't really that impressed by it. Other than that, though, the game itself was actually pretty freaking good. It was actually, quite frankly, awesome. It had a very good ending to it. But then again, though, the, uh, the calls, of course, are going to be called into question sometime tomorrow. And, of course, we've got to make comparisons to Michael Jordan's flu game. That was one of the very first things that Kurt Menefee said at the end of the game. Uh, even though I feel like the way the game was uh, ending, and especially with uh, Jalen Hurts as a little noodle arm at the very end, I didn't really have a dog in this fight. I wasn't really pulling for anybody. I think I even mentioned that earlier in the video. But at the same time, though, I mean, I, I don't think anybody really got out of this thing tonight. Uh, 
a winner, but it was obviously a good game, even though we obviously know that the Zebras kind of helped decide it. I mean, we probably should have seen this coming uh, when the Zebras kind of uh, helped um, – Mahomes get through in the AFC Championship game. And to a certain extent, the NFL itself kind of helped Hurts get through by setting him up against Daniel Jones' weak ass and then setting him up against Brock Purdy, who got injured, and then the backup to the backup got injured, and Christian McCaffrey was suddenly playing quarterback. Uh, also, something else, too, to those of you who didn't stick around for the full video, who just think I'm just some other crazy white man over here talking about gay nonsense and why it's so wrong. Uh, I do find it funny, though, that I, I shared this, uh, this, uh, this this tweet right here from a gay patriot who basically pointed this out. Very, very weird symbolism at the uh, Super Bowl uh, halftime show. I just figured I'd throw that out there. Also, one last thing. If you're ever on Twitter and you've got a uh, low amount of followers like I do, which is not that big of a deal because I just kind of shit post. Uh, the thing about Twitter you got to understand is if somebody with like 300,000 followers, not talking about Sean Farage, talking about John Cardillo here, um, if they respond to you all triggered and whatnot, chances are it's probably because you said something that was true and they're a little bit upset about the fact that you pointed it out and reminded them of some of the crap that they have said. So I just figured I'd throw that out there. Guys, John Claymore here. If you like the content, hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign off in the comment section, leave your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you guys later.